Hi all, Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. This is part three of the large X-ray computerized radiography scanner. Um, this is the unit where we have the laser scanner part. We have the whole optic fiber that leads up to the photomultiplier tube, along with uh, its associated high voltage power supply. It also has a large amount of gear. It sits on a really large uh, aluminum casted frame here, so this is a very heavy unit. So this will be the parts we will take a look at in this video. Now if you want some really awesome merchandise, check out my mugs and t-shirts in the link below. On the right side of the unit, we have the stepper motor that drives the whole large gearbox here, which drives the X-ray image plate through the whole scanner unit. Underneath it, we have the high voltage power supply for the photomultiplier tube. Now we can notice here it has a caution. After use of the brush, fix it in the parking position. Now this is what I found in part one, which is this wire with a small brass knob that you can pull all the way out. And it seems to go all the way back to between the rollers where you would imagine that the laser beam and meet up with the fiber optic going back to the PMT. So let's take a look at the other end. At the other end of the cleaning brush, we can see the wire going down here and we can see it goes in between the two rollers. We have the two large bundles of fiber optics here and the funnel we have here is the laser beam, scanning laser beam that goes over, hits a mirror and is, or hits a mirror behind here and is returned through the two bundles on each side of fiber optics to the PMT, which is the gray box sitting up here. It is a complete assembly that can just be turned and taken off. So let's do that. The PMT assembly can simply be turned to get loose of the notches, then carefully, carefully be pulled out. And we can actually see here the blue surface of the PMT. And we can also see here the milled down surface of all the fibers that runs back onto the port of the PMT. Now the uh, cables that goes to the PMT, one goes directly back to the computer with a nine pin connector. One goes over to the high voltage power supply and a thir third goes to the high voltage power supply as well, which is a sooner medium high voltage BNC plug. So I, I assume the high voltage supply is through this cable with the red markings. The high voltage power supply sits here, has one connector which goes back to the CPU. So this could just be a routing through with this one from the PMT assembly. Now if we just get rid of all these cables, we have what is presumably the high voltage supply line here. Now the whole assembly here seems to be sitting with maybe just that one bolt there. So let's see if that is the case. Because a lot of this is meant to be serviced from just one side, so you could not have screws on both sides of some of these components. And yes, it actually comes off in one unit. So let's put that to the side and take a look at that along with the PNT assembly. Here at the laser unit, we have a nice big warning sticker that says danger, laser radiation when open, avoid direct exposure to beam. Well, it's not turned on and we want to see the dangerous stuff. So let's just get rid of that plastic shield. And once we have all these parts off, I think it's safe to begin taking the whole big aluminium frame apart. So let's see what this reveals. Not that much. Except it has a Fintner Allen 710 SI. Okay, so that's actually the material composition of this. It's aluminium, zinc, silicium, magnesium, 1997. 
So except from uh, this uh, little reflector here where we see the back side of it, and the same goes for this one up here, then there is some assembly down here that actually seems to be the laser unit that has a optic part in there. Actually, I think, oh no, that was the, the hole here. That is the laser unit, it's gone. It was actually missing from the unit. Okay, that's a bomber. So we only have the optics here. There's no rotating mirrors and no uh, laser diodes. That's all gone. Okay, that's, that's a shame. So let's uh, get the whole frame torn down and uh, yeah, take a look at all the mechanical parts and especially the whole buildup of all these huge bundles of optic wires. The whole backplate here has come loose and we can actually notice we have the same composite material designation here but it says 1998 so this is actually one year younger than the lid we took off before. We can see here we have the three lenses that is used to spread out the laser beam so it would go up from the laser beam here to the reflector up here and be reflected into this slit where we will see whoops, where it went on the other side. Now there's not much to see on the other side of this cast unit here except that it is extremely sturdy. I mean there's so many cross beams for stability here. It is uh, one insane build compared to what I have seen in other units and it's heavy. So here we have the port, we can actually slightly see some reflective parts back there. And yeah, okay, we have the problem with this foam as we have with any aging foam, it just falls apart and contaminates everything. So we're not too interested in that, so I will see if I can just get that funnel that seems to just sit with two screws. Get that out of the way real quick. So with this removed, we can still only slightly see the reflective mirror on the other end, but we can actually see the brush that the parking position is actually at the full pulled out end here, and we can now see the reflective other side. To illustrate how all these bundles of fiber wires goes from the whole two lines on each side of the reflective mirrors to this end over at the PMT. I will just use a little lamp here and we can actually see that moving the lamp to the side that the bundles of fibers is going out to the edges. So that's a really, really cool effect we get here. And we can see it's not even evenly uh, distributed all around here because that's not necessary. The PMT does not need to know where this light comes from. It is all part of the synchronization with the laser module and the computer where it will find out which pixel is being scanned and it will just get, give out a light level and that information will be used to illuminate that exact, exact pixel. So let's see how much of this falls apart once we take the rest of the screws off this frame. And the unit has disintegrated completely. Now um, getting down to the heart of the unit, here we can actually see the opening and closing mechanism that is used to uh, let a new image plate enter and open up. Here we can see how it now it's closed and once it has turned enough the cam does that it slides back. An image can now pass through and be scanned and as it goes past to avoid having yeah false light coming in and disrupting the scan it will then 
be turning the cam again to close down the line again. The board here connects down to the CPU, so that's a complete separate unit. It had a lot of these uh, small custom-made uh, light diodes and um, light receivers. Um, so that went through some of all these brass bracketed fibers used to measure where the image plate came in and when it passed certain points through these plastic parts here. Again some nice big large casted and machined brackets that the whole unit consists of. And the whole gearbox here that actually drives the image plate the same way, so it's not a rotary or it's not a opposite gear. So it would actually be a shame to take this apart because that could probably be used for, for something fun. But if we take a look at the rotation here, it actually says here, uh, be careful it's filled with oil. So seems to have a redu reduction of speed from, let's see if I turn one, it's at least 1 to 20 or 1 to 30 or something like that. So uh, I think I will keep that uh, as one piece, maybe find something fun to do with that. The fiber optic unit. Now we can see it consists actually of two halves here. So if I, I remove this zip tie, I really do not hope that I have fibers springing all over the workshop. But that is made nicely by two encapsulated units here that can fit together with these two rods. But I guess that makes mounting much easier when you actually have this in two halves. On the other side of it, here we can see the service brush that was mentioned. And now we can also see down between these two sharp edges that we have the fibers itself, so if I shine some light into it here, we should be able to see them light up. Maybe it was the other one. Yeah. Okay, at least that's one, the one I can see. So now we can see all the fibers changing. So yeah, I will get this taken apart and save that for some funny project one day. The teardown of the laser and PMT modules did take a bit longer time than expected and unfortunately I did not find the time to do the reverse engineering of the PMT assembly itself. So you will have to wait for that in part 4. But I can promise you that it will be interesting and worthwhile the wait. So I hope you enjoyed the teardown video of the laser module part and really enjoyed the astonishing craftsmanship that was put into this product. So until next time, see ya!